Welcome to the Drama Teacher Podcast brought to you by Theater Folk, the Drama Teacher Resource Company. I'm Lindsay Price. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. This is episode 178, and you can find any links to this episode in the show notes, which are at theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 178. Today, today is for... Okay, so today we are talking tech and putting together a tech theater unit. Hands up. How many of you fear tech? How many of you avoid including it in your program? Well, our podcast guest today was in the exact same boat as you, and now he is a total tech convert. So let's get to it. All right, I am speaking with Josh Hat. Hello, Josh. Hello, Lindsay. All right, tell everybody in the world where you are right now. I am starting my second year at uh, an international school in Shanghai, China. I love the internet. Not always, but uh, we had a little we had a little <laughs> difficulty connecting. But uh, uh, we're here now, and uh, I think it's amazing. It's it's evening where I am, and morning where you are. Yes, yes, it's Friday morning. It was funny because I was trying to coordinate what time we were doing this, and now like I'm I'm back and I'm 12 hours ahead of you guys, and so we're like, okay, Thursday night at eight, and I'm like, wait, what does that actually mean for me? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> 12 is pretty good, though. You know, it's uh, it's it, it's it's when I get the most trouble when I'm like even dealing with coordinating like Mountain Time and Pacific Time, and it's like, okay, you are this time, I am this time. We're all good. <laughs> and uh, so this is your your second year at uh, at this at the school. So just just how is that going? What is it like to teach in an international school in China? It is it's it's amazing. Um, so we work at uh, at an American school. And so it's not much different, honestly, than any of the international schools as far as curriculum wise. Um, I've done the MYP curriculum beat before where um, this school, they they do a lot of common core. So it's it's incredible. Um, and because it's a, a private school, we were really lucky. And I happen to, you know, just I luck out. I get to work in this beautiful two-story black box theater, and I get to to take little sixth, seventh, and eighth graders through a little dramatic journey through there. It's 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 magical. We we kind of joke all the time. I was like, I work at Disneyland. This is amazing. <laughs> you know what? I'm not. That's a pretty uh, that's a pretty fun uh, description of uh, of of teaching theater. I love that. Uh, it's and, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, and we're going to, I'm very excited actually about what we're going to talk about today because I know that this is something that teachers are asking us and, and pleading with us all the time. How do I do tech theater? How do I teach tech theater? And the fact that you're doing it with middle school students, I think is even more exciting and interesting um, in terms of getting, getting some, getting some people, some, some good information. So, uh, why did you, why are you doing tech theater with your middle school students? You know, I've never done much outside of, you know, plugging a, um, a sound system, you know, into, into a small performance because I've always, I've always had the experience of being a middle school teacher. You know, we kind of, we get forgotten sometimes. Um, and you know, it's like, Oh great. Look, we have a room. Let's have a middle school drama program. And of course we're resilient and we persevere and we make it work and beautiful. Um, and then I, I had the opportunity because they had just built this brand new theater space, uh, at the school and the high school got a brand new black box theater. And so I inherited the, the, the old one, which is only 13 years old. So let's be serious. You know I mean? I'm just, I walk in and I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, look, there's lights and there's this like a legitimate sound system. And you know, we could, we have like set pieces. Let's, oh my gosh, let's do tech theater. Let's, let's make this happen. Well, and I actually, I really love you're coming from the perspective of, uh, that it's not your background, that you're not, you don't have a background in, in tech theater because 
everybody, oh. a lot of our folks listening, they're in they're in the same boat, and uh, they yeah. are, uh, you know, tech theater. Some of them, let alone have theater backgrounds. So I love that you're like, yep, tech theater. We're we're going to do tech theater. So it's kind of like you were learning along with them. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it was like, all right. So I'm, I was a couple of days ahead, ahead of the kids and um you know, I mean, it, we uh, again, we had these we had lights that we that we could use. We were using like these ancient gels and um and things and I was like, "Hey guys, do you want to let's do tech theater." Let's like, let's look at what makes, you know, a, a theater performance effective. And instead, let's look at it, let, what can make it technically effective? And what does that mean? And what does that look like? And, you know, I mean, the discussions that we could have was, was incredible. It was absolutely incredible to have sixth graders, you know, discuss what can make a, their scene, you know, their little red riding hood, you know, you know, t- tiny scenes well, how can we make it look technically effective, you know, and what that actually means? And it's like, all right, so I, I want to use red. Why? Why do you want to use red? Well, you know, I want to, I want to make something look really creepy. I'm like, ooh, I like where you're going with this. Let's explore this. Well, and uh, you know, first of all, the, I think the, the the conversation on the tech side is is it's kind of important because it is such a big part of theater that often gets kind of waylaid. You know, we always have this focus on the onstage stuff. Um, and why not have a focus on what what else goes into making? I love your, your the use of the word effective. What else goes into making a theatrical production um, effective? You know, you're making them you're making them think, Josh. Yes, and yes, we are. And then in turn, they're making me, me think. They're like, "This is an issue. How do we solve this issue?" And I'm like, "How do we solve this issue?" <laughs> you know. And then we kind of take a, a village approach to how how do we overcome this thing it's like oh my gosh you know what happens when the soundboard goes down which happens you know what happens when the lighting board goes down like what do we do and you know i mean it's as a result my 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 theater students are so much more resilient you know i mean we of course you do you know your your thumbs up thumbs down at the end of a unit they're like that might be the most difficult thing i've ever experienced in my life i'm like okay yeah are we going to do it again ne- next year? They're like, heck yeah. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Well, that's good. That means, yeah. wow, that means that, uh, no, well, it's, it's not only the unit, it's it's the way that you approach the unit, right? Because like, you know, it's, it's probably your, uh, your, let's call it guidance, your guidance, Josh, just like, you know, <laughs> you brought them through. So let's talk about that. So uh, how did you set up your tech theater unit? It was really cool, um, if I do say so myself. Um, Go ahead. You know, we <laughs> we we looked at first. Um, we just we watched some videos. You know, like we're in this brand new room, and it was interesting because we were in this other room at the beginning of last year, and so you know, your your basic we called it the drama studio. You know, I mean, we were fortunate to have this big open space, but really not a lot of um of of tech stuff so then we moved we moved over into the black box theater so we all kind of looked at it together and we're like all right so guys let's let's do this you know we've been working on some 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 stuff and so we looked at the lights first and so we we really just kind of broke it down we're like what is tech theater so you know we looked at you know we have the possibility of lights and then okay awesome so let's Let's make that like a little mini thing. Um, and then we have the possibility of sound. Okay, cool. Well, let's not do too much at one time. Let's first look at how can lights contribute to a technically effective performance? You know, you know, we've been we've been trained to say the word the word curtain when we want to start a show, and then curtain when we're done a show to let the audience know that we are done. All right, so now we can turn the lights off, guys. Let's do it. Right. And so it's kind of training that it's like, so now we can guide the audience through this, through this thing. So we watched a bunch of YouTube videos and there's a billion videos out there um, with, you know, examples of what can make, make a scene look effective. It's like, how can lights contribute to this performance, you know? And then it started opening these conversations about, well, how do we take the audience with us you know at this point it's like who is the most important you know player of 
of a scene. And we're like, well, I guess the audience. I'm like, all right, so how do we make this a performance for them? So they really started thinking about the audience and the audience's role in, in a scene. It was really quite remarkable, actually. So when you're talking about looking at the lights, are you are you doing uh, just the sort of the design question aspect or are you doing the, pra- the the technical, not necessarily practical, but the the looking at the lighting instruments and how, and how those work or is that just something for another day? Um, it was all of that, you know, of oh, course, cool. I mean, okay. at the beginning, at the beginning, I was terrified, you know, <laughs> um, to like do this. I'm like, you guys are, you're 10. All right. Can you handle this? And, you know, I'm kind of thinking it through this. And, and so first, you know, we, we take through the concept of a, well, let's plan for our success. Um, and so what does a red light do to a scene? Like, what does that make the audience feel? And so I was fortunate enough. I had this um, light mounted on this little, this block of wood, um, which had been used for shadow theater in years gone past for the high school students. And so, you know, we took down a bunch of gels. And so I was like, all right, guys, well, I need a group of four. Um, you guys run into the middle of the of the stage and, I don't know, make, make a tableau about something. And so then I had other students kind of come around. Um, and, you know, and we looked at what a green gel would do to that scene. And then we looked at what a blue gel would do to that scene. And then a red one and things like, like, like that. And I'm like, why have I never done this before? I could have done this with a flashlight, for heaven's sakes, you know, to, to really take a look at, at, at that. And so then, of course... Then we go through the conversations and then it's like, all right, well, I don't want you guys to break your necks. Um, you know, if you're going to go up into the catwalk, let's, let's talk about safety, you know, like when, when not to touch the light. And, and it was quite surprising um, at how professional these, these students really were. I mean, like they were hooked instantly when they walked in the room, you know, and they could see how light could actually contribute to their scene. So we just did some blank scenes and we're like, all right, well, let's talk about mood now because we can do that. Let's, how do we, what mood do you want to convey to the audience? They're like, ooh, let's make this, let's make this really scary or let's make it look really, let's make it look like nighttime or something. And then they, they went through that and, and discussed it. And then I said, all right, well, here's the safety. You guys are, are trained now to use the equipment. Go nuts. <laughs> make make some art, kids. That's awesome. Okay, so just let's let's I'm gonna back because you just said you had to put so much in, in there. And the first thing I would say is <laughs> to anyone listening, Josh is absolutely right. All of this can be accomplished with a flashlight. You can put a gel on a flashlight. You can do yeah. front lighting, back lighting, top lighting, uh, side lighting with a flashlight, and it accomplishes the exact same effect on a very small scale. But like, if you're listening to this, going, "Oh, there's no way." Like, for example, you know, oh, we don't have a black box, so we can't do lighting. Yes, you can. Or my my administration would never let middle schoolers up on the catwalk okay so get that flashlight out and and you can do the exact same things that josh is talking about in a lighting unit uh talking about mood and how different gels set the scene and um i i lo- so like when you talk about that they, they were trained to work on the light so did every kid get a chance to like go on the catwalk and like adjust it was it a, adjust the fresnels and like put the the gels in and and hook up everything did you did everyone get to do something like that Every single one. So I, <laughs> I put the fear in, in them. Like, okay, guys. I mean, like one. Like, you're we're working with a one chance system here. Like, if we if you mess up um, because you're not paying attention, um, you're gonna have to come sit by me and come hang out. Um, so that they kind of understood what was at stake. We we talked about. I mean, there are some serious safety consequences here. You know, if you're you're goofing around. Um, so what we ended up doing is I had like a water bottle on, on the, the floor. Um, and then I had some other like little stage pieces and I was like, all right, so let's, let's focus a light here, you know, like let's, let's make a, a hard focus or let's soften the edges and things like that. So they have, everybody became a lighting technician, um, through, through this. And, you know, it's very interesting that you, you said that, you know, like, you know, everybody can do this if they they wanted to and it wasn't until I had this space and I'm like kicking myself in the butt you know I mean tech theater I always just had the attitude 
no, nah, I can't do it. I, I don't have the, the stuff, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm just middle school. No, there's no way. Like now it doesn't matter what space that I ever have. I will always teach tech theater because I think it gives such a perspective of the village approach to what, you know, drama truly is like this, this collaboration piece. Like it just, it completely transformed the way that I approach drama now and the way that my students look at what drama is because I mean, let's face it. I we we get this the students that, you know. I mean, at my school, the way the system works is they either do choir or orchestra or band or drama. So really, we get we get everybody. We get the the drama enthusiasts, and then we get the ones who who are kind of there because they're not you know musically gifted or talented or interested or or things like like that. And so this this tech theater unit gave every single student an opportunity to to find interest and passion in it. And that was just lights. Like that was just the start of lights where, you know, these, these kids didn't it completely, I had such a profound impact on me as a professional actually. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, I mean, I mean, and when you get right down to it, um, the tech side can be very creative, you know, like you yeah. have, I think I love light on stage. Like I love seeing, like, cause how do you, light is one of the ways that you can create a world. So you can be, yeah technical and you can be a technician but you can also like you know use the other side of your brain so I, you're absolutely right there's a there's a piece for everybody in technical theater yeah yeah it really is and because we every every kid in the class went like we rotated through as soon as we did lights then we started playing with sound um and we watched um youtube videos in fact i'll i'll share the link with 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 you guys um it was mary poppins the remix of her of the trailer where we watched, you know, the happy, airy, fairy, oh, bubbly right, right, right. Um, movie trailer. And then somebody, some mastermind genius um, recreated it to make it a horror movie instead. And I was like, look at what sound can do. You know to what? Your scenes. And I'll just, I'll just, I'll riff on that. Well, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll put a couple of those in the, in the show notes. Cause there's also one for the shining that makes it look like a yes! sitcom. Yes. We, I, we use both of those examples. Yeah. 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 I, I, and well, that's a perfect, oh my gosh, that is an amazing uh, example for uh, how sound can change um, how sound can impact, eh? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Everything, everything. And so what, what we ended up doing is, of course, we record everything in class so that we can then watch it later and be like, all right, what worked? What didn't work? What would we have to do to enhance that? You know, it's like, wow, my goal was to really creep the audience out, but everybody laughed. Yeah, okay, cool. Why? What could you do differently next time to, to change or mold that experience? And, and it's just... It's had such a profound impact on the way that my students think about drama. Like, I think, you know, you mentioned it be before where it's like, you know, a, a lot of people look at drama and they think, okay, well, it's, it's Brad Pitt or it's, you know, it's um, Angelina Jolie. Like, it's, that's what drama is. I'm like, no, 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 my friend. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes, they are a part of it. <laughs> yes, they are there. But um, my students now truly look at drama as as a professional. You know, I mean, they look at it as a profession and all the pieces that go into it. They've got such a different appreciation of what drama is and what goes into a piece of this. Because I asked them at the end, end of the year and I'm like, OK, like, like what has changed? How has your perspective changed about what what drama is? And they're like dude, it's so much work. And they're like, yeah, but it was so cool because I got to design lights. They're like, yeah, well, I got to like hang the lights. And they're like, yeah. And then I got to des design this soundboard using my, my computer and the apps, um, you know, for sound effects and things like that. Like they just, they were designers, they were technicians, they were, uh, uh, it was, it was incredible. Wow, what a great exercise too. So for sound, did you have them like like searching for sound for for music and for sound effects to add to? A, did, did they do blank scenes again? Yes, they did. Yeah, so they they did the A, a B scenes, and what happened was they'd be in groups of uh, four or five, where I'd have two people on lights, one one person to angle and set and to do the d designing, one person to run the board, and then with the the sound. Um, yeah, we use the program called Soundbite, which uh, 
again, I'll, I'll share with you the information with, with that. It's free. It, it shuts down every 15 or so minutes, and that's their way of saying, please buy my, my product, which I would recommend. I've actually since bought it and put it on our, our classroom thing. I think it was like 40 bucks, um, where they, the students can find their music. They source their music from wherever they do. They get an idea, um, and then they can include it in this computer program or even on their iPads, where they are then controlling the the sound effects and the music all from their fingertips. So we just did a little tutorial a workshop, and they ended up teaching me things. I'm like, hey, how do you actually make this this piece of music into an mp3 or they're like oh well let's just record it on whatever so they were they were finding their own m music they were creating their own music and soundscapes and um it was it was limitless and then they would just they would run their own tech they would have little tech rehearsals and then they would show their little masterpieces and we would film them and the school community is like what you did what? And and it was really great being able to have conversations then about subtext. And I mean, what a great exercise of what subtext is. They're like, but I can only say these words. And I'm like, yeah, but what can you do to communicate that mood that you are after? Yeah, love it. I think that's awesome. Okay, so we have uh, light and sound. What did you do next? Yeah. Oh, well then, <laughs> um, we looked at, <laughs> we looked at, you know, um, building scene, you know, it's like, it, it's, it was piece by piece by piece. And we all, we used the AB scenes and, um, what these blank scenes did is it just provided this little tiny blank canvas. And I'm like, okay, so let's create a world. Like what happens when you've got a script or, you know, you're devising your own piece and you want to create this world, but you don't, the, the author the playwright hasn't given you these these clues, these de details, you know, like some people just don't work like, like that. Um, so you want to create this world, this environment, you know, it's like, okay, you've got sound and you've got lights and you can do that once the scene has started and, you know, it, the, the performance has be begun. But now you have an opportunity to create an environment as somebody walks into your space. It doesn't matter if you have a black box or you've got any any room in a closet or anywhere, how do you create the space? Um, so we looked at, you know, fairy tales and different things like that, where, you know, students, you know, we, we got all these boxes. And I mean, schools are full of this cardboard and boxes and art department has paint, you know, if you're not fortunate enough to have your own budget or something like, like that. And it's like, cool, let's create this scene. What does it look like? You know, it's, it's no more of just like jumping into the middle of, of the floor and, you know, having this scene. I mean, yes, that's, that's great. It has its place, but let's create this experience for an audience. You know, where are you? What is your setting? Oh, well, we're in a forest. Cool. What does that look like? Uh, I guess trees. Cool. How do you make them? Uh, I, I, Oh, I, I guess I could just like cut out this thing. Like, yes, yes. Work with me, people. Go build, go to build thine forest. <laughs> and, you know, and, and they, they run and they create and they just, they love it. It's, it's complete mayhem. And I guess that was, that was the biggest thing. Like as, as long as I could like keep my cool and just like step back and trust that, you know, these now theater professionals, I call them professionals, you know, from, from the beginning of this unit. Like we have to be professional. We have to make good choices. Yes, we're kids. Yes, we're humans. We're going to be creative. We're going to create these beautiful masterpieces, but we've got to be professional as we're, as we're, we're going. And so gradually being able to step back and just kind of watch them, watch them work and support them and question them and challenge them and challenge their choices. And, um, it was incredible. Mm hmm. Oh, it just sounds well. So often, middle school students are—they're really given a a bad rap that they can't that that they're not thinking for themselves, and we can't put them in a position where they're well that they're in in charge of their own decision making when it comes to a particular unit. And it just it just really sounds like these they were in charge. <laughs> They they truly were, and they were so proud of it too. Oh yeah, of course they were because they because it's the the I'm sure you could just see the wheels turning about how 
how plays are actually made and that to, that realization that it's not just let's get on stage and do like some improv games it's oh where am i oh how does the light create a mood oh how does the sound give subtext you know and then um when you when you did costumes like uh what, what were they working with in terms of creating costumes for their for scenes so with costumes we we ended up running out, out of time to be honest um, but we, we talked about costumes and we use them. They ended up just bringing things in, mixing, matching. We used, um, the costume closet that we had at the, the school. Um, but it was, again, it was that big picture conversation. The grade eights, we, we really focused a lot on the use of costumes where we had d designers work in a, um, a little company we, we had for the eight, eighth graders. It's okay. You've gone through all the work to create this beautiful, sound plot you have these beautiful lighting plot you know you've really thought through your your lights and you've really thought through your staging what are you wearing really like it's now that you've gone through all of this work now what have you got to wear like what you know i mean and we didn't get into it too much but you know we, we touched on it you know color is symbolism and um you know wearing wearing complimentary things so you're not super clashy with your with your set you know you're not wearing a purple shirt with a purple background um and conversations like like that but really again just looking through it big picture lens yeah and then so and then how did it culminate like were you were you assessing them all along the way or did at the end did they have to do a, a like a like a, a scene from a play and put all these pieces in uh so what was their so what was the end result of the unit yeah um i did it a little differently with each of the grade levels um they all went through the same stuff um and actually right now i'm kind of thinking about okay what am i going to make specific sixth grade what am i going to make specific seventh and eighth and so on um but what the eighth graders I had to do, I took a project-based um, learning approach through Buck Institute. We had this amazing um, Buck Institute rep come to our school and teach us this stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, drama is project-based learning. We've been using this stuff. We've been doing this stuff for years. I mean, we're, we're the experts, um, you know, but just putting the jargon in, into it. So what I did with the eighth graders is I made them again, a company. And so in each company, they had the players and then they had the designers and technicians. Um, and so what we did with them is I gave them scenes of plays of, of a play that we did at the school. I thought that was a really cool way to kind of, you know, you've, you've seen what the school play did. Now here's, you go put your own spin, um, where they then designed everything. They had a production notebook, um, you know, we did like these walk around, we did these gallery walks and stuff as far as the planning and implementation. So yeah, the culmination for the eighth graders was a scene from a play. Retrospect and feedback, the students really would have been appreciated um, picking their own scenes. And I'm like, well, cool. I mean, it makes no difference to me. Um, so we did that with the six and sevens. I actually then had them devise their own scenes. So instead of taking somebody else's work, they created their own own work and did everything. I mean, if, again, they were a theater company. Um, we did everything that we did with the eighth graders, only they created their own thing where the eighth graders used somebody else's use somebody else's material, trying to kind of then prepare them for their work when they go on to high school. Awesome. 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 Okay. As we, uh, as we wrap this up, okay. What's your, what three pieces of advice would you give to middle school teachers or anybody actually? It doesn't, uh, it's not limited to middle school because there's lots of people who are terrified of teaching tech theater. And, um, what would you say to them? What's, what's your advice to say, don't be afraid. Yeah. Um, my advice, honestly, first of all, is to do it. Um, it's, again, it's, it's transformed the way that I see drama and drama is such a creative, a creative vessel. And, and it's, it's so full of all these things that we know, we know it's full of this collaboration, this cooperation and, you know, critical thinking and, and everything. And so be okay with not being in control, be okay with being able to sit back and exploring something together with the kids we are not the be all end all grand high wizard of drama um and so if you can be cool with that 
and then you take a group approach, which kind of is what theater is anyway. And, you know, it's a bunch of these professionals coming together, to collaborate, um, do it. And it's totally cool. And you're going to mess up. And I messed up. And if, but the, if the students see, they saw me as a collaborator rather than the keeper of all the answers. Um, so yes, to put that, I guess that, that thought in, into one, do it, be okay with not being in control and get messy, go to YouTube and watch this stuff. Um, I didn't even touch on the makeup work that, that we did with the, the students. I am not a makeup expert, but you go to YouTube and watch tutorials. They teach you the fundamentals. And then just like anything, you need practice. And so just, just play, get dirty. And that's what drama is. Make mistakes and analyze those mistakes until you come up with your own truth. And, and it's brilliant. You will not be sorry. Well, well, that's an awesome place to end. Josh, thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. It's been exciting. My pleasure. It's good to be back. Thank you, Josh. Before we go, let's do some theater folk news. So Josh is not only a drama teacher, he's also a member of our Drama Teacher Academy, and on top of that is an instructor for the Drama Teacher Academy. So we have in the DTA uh, from Josh a Google Drive in the Drama Classroom course, and upcoming in this summer, everything that Josh has talked about here in this podcast is going to be a DTA course. That means mini units and lighting, sound, costume, makeup, and staging. Doesn't that sound awesome? Sounds awesome to me. Wee. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Wee. So head on over to Drama Teacher Academy, all one word, dot com uh, to learn more about what we have to offer in the land of DTA for teachers, professional development, resources, lesson plans, curriculum, link to standards, all the wonderful things. Uh, or you can click the link in the show notes, which are at theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 178. Are you doing one of our plays? Take a rehearsal picture and send it to us. Working on a monologue in the classroom? Take a picture and send it to us. Are you a member of the DTA and you're using an exercise? Well, take a 30-second video and send it to us. We want to showcase you. We want to brag about what you do. Where do you send all this? Tfolk at theaterfolk.com. Finally, where where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every second Tuesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com slash theaterfolk and on the Stitcher app. You can subscribe to the Drama Teacher Podcast on iTunes. All you have to do is search for the word theaterfolk. And that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care.